Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Guide My Career. This is Shiva from Department of Meteorology and Oceanography, Andhra University. In our first two videos of the Remote Sensing Resolutions Part 1 and 2, we have discussed about the spatial and uh, spectral resolution. Like uh, uh, spatial resolution is generally uh, tells about the area or size of the each pixel of an image in terms of uh, degrees, kilometers, meters, centimeters, like that. And coming to the spectral resolution, which something which tells about the uh, ability of sensor, like uh, how best your sensor in discriminating or uh, uh, um, resolving the different uh, fine uh, range of wavelength to detect even small changes in the wavelengths of the reflected light from different different features on the earth. Like that, we have discussed about both two resolutions, right? So in this video, we are going to talk about uh, temporal resolution. Uh, temporal resolution is something which deals with the time the term temporal uh, which indicates the time that's why generally temporal resolution uh, measures in time uh, in terms of time like uh, minutes hours day uh, weekly 10 days like that right see if you see what the temporal resolution exactly is the absolute temporal resolution of remote sensing system to image the same area at the same viewing angle a second time is equal to the repeat cycle of a satellite but don't get worried i will make you understand what temporal resolution is uh, in, in simple words, I can say at what time later the satellite will revisit the same area with same viewing angle or the earth. That means you have one region or the earth, right? So uh, you got one satellite data, right? So after at, uh, after what time you will get the uh, next data for, the, for that same region, okay? That means for suppose uh, you have one region and you got some satellite data by uh, today morning 10 a.m. And you know that uh, the temporal resolution of the satellite data is one day. So you know two things. Means you have one region. By today morning 10 a.m. you got one satellite data for particular region. Right. And you also know that the temporal resolution of satellite data is one day. So then at what time later you will get the next data for the same region. Obviously tomorrow morning 10 a.m. Since your uh, temporal, since your temporal resolution, since uh, temporal resolution of uh, a satellite data is one day, right? This means I mean what I mean to say it indicates the time interval between one to the next uh, satellite data for the same region or the Earth. That's what it indicates. See at what time later uh, satellite will revisit. Okay, the uh, same area with the same viewing angle. Okay, this is how generally we define the what temporal resolution is. Okay, see and coming to the uh, satellite systems in general, we have a uh, basic and standard satellite systems like geostationary and polar orbiting. Okay, but uh, in case of uh, uh, geostationary satellites, these geostationary satellites will have high temporal resolutions compared to the uh, polar orbiting satellites. You know why? Because geostationary satellites will fix at one particular location in the space uh, with such a heights uh, like uh, around 36,000 kilometers away from the earth and spins uh, with the equal speed of the earth. Okay, since these satellites will fix at one particular location uh, in the space and uh, revolves with the equal speed of the earth, they will have a capability. I mean, they will have a facility to see uh, uh, at what uh, they will have a facility to see one particular region or the earth continuously, right? That's why they will have uh, such a high temporal resolution compared to the polar orbiting satellites. Okay. And coming to the polar orbiting satellites, just like a geostationary satellites, they will not fix at one particular location in space. Instead, they will uh, they move from the north pole to south pole of the Earth uh, with such a heights like 800 to uh, sorry 800 to 1300 kilometers away from the Earth. Right. You see, just like how they move around the globe. See, you see, this is all the uh, tracks of the polar orbiting satellites. This is how it looks. See, because uh, there is one advantage in uh, polar orbiting satellites that uh, they, these polar orbiting satellites will cover the whole globe since they move from the north pole to south pole of the Earth in some uh, with, with such a heights uh, away from the Earth, right? But in case of polar orbiting uh, geostationary satellites, it will not happen like that. They will not cover the whole globe since they will fix at one particular location in space and continuously see the same area on the earth, right? So this is how uh, these both uh, geostationary satellites uh, will have different different uh, temporal resolutions. You will see uh, what are different different satellites are there and 
their temporal resolution. If you see this table for view, for an idea, I just mentioned some of the uh, basic and famous satellites and their temporal resolutions. See, just like uh, in case of Landsat, uh, in Landsat 5 and 7, you see the temporal resolution is 16 days, right? That means, uh, uh, while I'm saying like a temporal resolution of any satellite is this much, uh, these days, one day like this, what you should understand, for suppose you have taken satellite data for one region, and you came to know that, uh, for suppose in case of Landsat, you see, okay, uh, you have taken Landsat data for a particular region or the Earth, and you know the uh, the temporal resolution of that Landsat is 16 days. Then what should you understand? After 16 days, you will get the next data for that region. Okay, this is how we have to understand when somebody said what the uh, temporal resolution of satellite data is this much, that much, right? Okay, and uh, some more factors are there which decides the uh, temporal resolution of uh, 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 diff different satellites. Like, uh, see, for suppose uh, 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 viewing capability of sensor, swath, overlap, latitude, these are all uh, some of the factors which uh, changes the uh, actual temporal resolution of a sensor. Because, see, uh, if you see the uh, footprint of the, see, if you see this image or the background, you see, this is the uh, footprint of the satellite we generally call it as a swath the term called swath is the footprint of the satellite in remote in remote sensing generally we call it as a swath and the width of this uh, footprint generally we call it as a swath width okay and coming to the overlap overlap is nothing but a common area common area uh, on a consecutive images along the uh, satellite direction okay see if you see this image so this if it is a uh, if it is a side to side, if there is any common area from one to next consecutive images along the side of the image, you see, this we call it as a side side lap. In this image, you can see. And coming to the overlap, overlap is just like a common area on the top or bottom of the image onto the next image. Between the two images, if there is any common area, we, we call that, we term that area as a overlap. If it is a side, side of the image, we, we call it as a just like a side lap. Okay. And uh, uh, as I told, temporal resolution also depends on the viewing angle, viewing angle of the sensor. For suppose if sensor has a large viewing angle, then the SWAT width, width will be very high. Then uh, a polar orbiting satellite uh, will take less time to complete the whole globe. Whole globe. Similarly, if the SWAT width is, I mean, uh, sensor viewing angle is very narrow, then the uh, SWAT, width, SWAT width will be very narrow since it takes too much, uh, since, since uh, then it takes a lot of time to cover the whole globe and uh, temporal resolution will be less. This is how uh, generally uh, means uh, uh, temporal resolution of a sensor uh, based on uh, depends on different different parameters like viewing capability of sensor, swath, overlap and latitude. If you see this overlap, this overlapping area increases, increases from uh, equator to pole. Why? Since the longitudes aligned in such a way, like uh, generally the space between the longitude to longitude is very high at the equator compared to pole. Since they converge, these uh, longitudes are converged at both north and south pole of the earth, right? That's why the space between the, uh, uh, between the longitudes is uh, very high at the equator. And uh, this distance, I mean the space between the longitudes uh, from the equator to pole, this space between these longitudes generally decreases, okay? And as well as this distance, I mean, as the space between the longitudes decreases, the side lapping area generally increases, right? Okay, this is all, I mean, uh, these are all different, different parameters will decide the and changes the actual temporal resolution of sensor. Okay, and coming to the applications, there are so many wide applications in remote sensing with, I mean, uh, uh, remo I mean, temporal resolutions of remote sensing, okay? I mean, with the uh, temporal resolution of different, different satellites, we have different, different wide uh, applications in remote sensing. Okay. See, but suppose uh, you know, in order to monitor the uh, uh, extreme weather events or a short lived weather events like uh, uh, cyclone, uh, storm surges, floods, volcano, all this kind of, uh, uh, if you want to monitor all this kind of uh, events, you will need to get high temporal resolution satellite data. For, for example, you have one satellite and uh, its temporal resolution is one week. That means uh, if you get the data about in one region, if you get any satellite data uh, uh, about one region, after seven days, you will get the next data, right? When your uh, temporal resolution 
uh, is one week right so what will happen when temporal resolution is very very that much low like seven days what will happen within that seven days whatever happened in between the seven days you will not know means uh, for suppose if you if you if you see this uh, like extreme weather events like a cyclone storm surges flood any thunderstorm tornado volcano all this kind of these are the all uh, uh, events which has very uh, short uh, short span of time means uh, their life is very uh, very short i mean within week they may die i mean they may form and they may die right so when your uh, temporal resolution is uh, that much low means one week one week you will not be able to uh, track all these i mean uh, extreme events right i mean you will not say anything about all these things you cannot monitor you cannot see because your, when your temporal resolution is such a low like one week right so in such cases like uh, in order to monitor this all kind of extreme uh, weather events like cyclone so geostationary highly temporal resolution satellite data is very much required like uh, geostationary if you if you see this image this is the image of insa 3d and uh, you can see here uh, how uh, how uh, uh, best uh, in uh, monitoring this all uh, uh, cyclones kind of things like floods volcanoes Uh, by using this geostationary satellites you can see for suppose this is the insat 3d r image and this is the image of cloud you can see uh, gender, there are so many descriptions i mean so many processor to say whether it is a um, cyclone depression deep depression uh, any say severe cyclone like that but uh, as per an example i am saying like for suppose this is a cloud patch and you say okay this is the cyclone or eye of the cyclone over some time it may displace to this this here so uh, over some time it may displace to here it may displace to here like that see um, by uh, observing the uh, continuous imagery uh, of particular region you can say how the cyclone is moving with respect to the time by based on the previous uh, position previous uh, movement of the cyclone we can predict that okay uh, okay because since the cyclone is moving this direction so in for the next uh, 24 hours it may reach this place so it dis Uh, this coast and landfall this uh, landfall at this coast that coast like that we say since we have such a high temporal resolution otherwise we will not say we will not track all these things we will miss all this de detailed information regarding the cyclone when we have no uh, uh, high temporal resolution data okay that's how uh, generally at a high temporal resolution of the geostationary satellite data will help you to monitor all this kind of uh, uh, extreme weather events or short lived events like a cyclone storms or just floods volcano tornado uh, all uh, thunderstorms and all that's why we call this that's why uh, we also call this uh, geostationary satellites like a weather satellites it means that's why because these uh, geostationary satellites play crucial role in monitoring uh, all this kind of such a weather events that's why we also call this uh, as a weather satellites also and coming to the uh, temporal resolution of the polar orbiting satellites polar orbiting satellites like a uh, play a very crucial role uh, 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 to monitor the events like uh, uh, any phenomena which is taking place over the earth any uh, variations with respect to time if you want to find the long term variations in any phenomena any features of the ground for suppose if you see the land one of the most important topic in remote sensing like land use and land cover right so Uh, if you want if you take the uh, uh, images uh, from the uh, polar orbiting satellites okay in terms of polar orbiting satellites the temporal resolution is a little bit less to uh, compared to geostationary but with respect to time if you want to see how the phenomena is varying see land is land cover means within the, since last 10 years how the land has changed with respect to time okay since the last 2 uh, 3 4 years uh, what are the uh um, changes happened within uh, this region means whether this area is covered by uh, uh, vegetation was increased or decreased like that if you want to say any variations if you want to say from the different different features on the ground with respect to time at that moment uh, temporal resolution of the uh, polar orbiting satellite uh, uh, is very much crucial okay since the polar orbiting satellite uh, spatial resolution since the spatial resolution of the polar orbiting satellite is very very high compared to the uh, geostationary since uh, polar orbiting satellites fly with uh, such a heights like uh, a little bit lower heights compared to the geostationary generally polar orbiting satellites uh, fly at uh, around 800 to 
1300 kilometers away from the earth but in case of geostationary it is 36000 kilometers that's why in general polar orbiting satellites uh, will have high spatial resolution and lower temporal resolution similarly geostationary satellites have a high temporal resolution and low spatial resolution right so like this if i if i am talking like this there are so many uh, wide applications in uh, remote sensing with uh, high temp i mean temporal resolutions in remote sensing uh, like there's so many applications I, I, I but i for an view for an example for an idea i just mentioned some of them so like uh, this you see how flooding area of the extent of flooding you see how it is varying with respect to time so like this if i talk so many uh, wide applications in the uh, Uh, in uh, remote sensing with uh, this temporal resolutions of remote sensing so it's uh, that's why i can say it's one of the um, important uh, uh, resolutions in remote sensing remote sensing resolutions like this so many applications are there like with respect to all all features like like cyclones and all variations in different different features and all right so this is all about the uh, temporal resolution see now next video we'll uh, discuss about the spectral resolution thank you